Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Tuesday the 7th of November. I hope you're having a good Remembrance Week and taking some time to uh, appreciate the sort of the fall transition from the wonderful, beautiful, bright weather to heading toward Christmas and, and the winter and that slowing down. I love the fall. It's my favorite time of year. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about something I read yesterday on Monday from Common Prayer, a liturgy uh, for ordinary radicals. And it's got daily readings. And one of the things it said here was it referred to um, desert, uh, desert Aunt Mother Emma Theodora, um, early, early church times um, in the beginning centuries of Christianity. There were desert mothers and fathers, like monks and nuns, so to speak, who would um, live out in the desert and they lived ascetic lives and were very profoundly spiritual. And some of their teachings have been passed down to us. And so this is something that is quote, that is um, is contributed by a D desert mother, Amma Theodora. She said, there was a monk who, because of a great number of his temptations, said, I will go away from here. As he was putting on his sandals, he saw another man who was also putting on his sandals. And this other monk said to him, is it on my account that you are going away? because I go before you wherever you are going. That I read that at about 6.30 in the morning yesterday, and it was like, whoa, okay, I think I just woke up. One of those things that I think that, you know, when we're talking to our young people, our teenagers, and, and even more, um, you know, older people about is, especially when they're, we're talking about the difficulties of life and addictions or... Um, predilections we have to anger or frustrations or um, thinking negative, negatively. And one of the things we have to keep reminding ourselves and others about is that, that we, can, we can move ourselves completely into completely different situations. But unless we move our minds out of the previous situation, we're not going to change anything. When I was a kid, we moved around all the time. We were a lot, like every couple of years we moved. And I always saw it as a great adventure because this was an opportunity for me to reinvent myself, that I could become, you know, what I didn't like about myself where I was before, new people, new ways of being, you know, like these, these people didn't know who I was. And these kids in grade four didn't know who I was in kindergarten. And the things that the kids in kindergarten through grade three, three who knew me and didn't like me or whatever the problem was that they would, these new people wouldn't know who I, who I was. And they wouldn't know not to like me and things like that. And then I discovered when I got to the stool and we were in grade four, that some of the same stuff was coming up. I had some really good friends, but I also had those people who, you know, was, I rubbed them the wrong way. It didn't take me, it, it took me till years and years later when I began to realize that the problem wasn't the environment I was in. The problem was that I was in the environment. Until I changed my way of being, until I thought differently, any of those old thoughts came with me. So the very things that I thought were other people's problems about me, I began to realize that they were my, my problems. Other people didn't have a problem with me. I had a problem with me. And with this monk who's thinking, I'm going to move away from the temptations, what he didn't realize is that, those t that, se that sense of being tempted was within him. He was really, I think, looking in the mirror at the man who was putting on his sandals as well, because wherever he would go, that one would go ahead of him, prepare the path. And isn't that true about our lives? That unless we actually do the work of thinking about and figuring out what it is about my circumstances that I don't like, and how my, and, and then figuring out, okay, what can I do about that? How often is it the actual circumstances that we're in, the environment that we're in, or the circumstances, the environment that we have within that are the problem. And that's a hard one to deal with. It really is because there are things, it would be, it's so much easier if we can say that that's the problem. You know, it's my boss. My boss is, is he's just a crappy boss. And my boss is great by the way, but my boss is a crappy boss and he is overbearing or she is a pain in the took us and, and they just don't, ex they just expect way too much of me or they have their, they, you know, what I do, they don't appreciate. This is the problem. And so I'll go and get a different job and have a different boss and then it'll be all good. And then, so you trundle off to the next place and you just start discovering the same problems are there. And if you pay attention to the pattern, 
you start to begin to re recognize what's the common denominator. The circumstances were different. The environments were different. The bosses were different. Yet the problems were the same. Maybe that's because the problems lie with, exist within us. I'm the first to admit I am a major mess up sometimes. I am my own worst critic, but I'm also the hardest. I am the person who is the hardest on myself when it comes to recognizing that, you know, I'm the common denominator. It's hard to acknowledge that, that when things are going wrong and, you know, you've got to be careful, you've got to pay attention to what exactly is going wrong. Like I'm in the perfect situation here where I am with my current, my, with Dayspring, with three different congregations, that I can take a look at things because I have, I, I'm literally in different environments for things. And many of the things I do in each of those environments is the same thing. I'm called to do, as their priest, I'm called to do X, Y, and Z in each of those churches. So I can look at that and say, okay, if something's going wrong, if I'm doing X and it's falling flat completely, and it's falling flat at all three churches, is that because the congregations don't get it? Or is it because I don't get it? In that case, the common denominator is me. I don't get it. But if I'm doing something in each of the three churches and two of the churches are like, yeah, this is okay, let's keep going with this. And the third one, it isn't then it could be that that's the situation. It's more situational and more environmental than it is me. That maybe something needs to be tweaked or maybe that's, maybe it is just a personality thing. Who knows? But being able to step back and say, is it really the environment I'm in? Is it really the atmosphere? Or am I the issue here? And that's hard. This is why we're not talking about this on Feel Good Friday, because it's really, really hard to take a look at ourselves and say, maybe, maybe you are the problem. Maybe you're making a mistake or maybe you're, you're interpreting things or the wrong way, or you're being um, too self-conscious or you're being too, um, you know, you're being too hard on yourself that other people are looking at you and saying like, get over it. It's not that big a deal. And you're laboring under that. It's hard. It's, it's really hard to be able to do that work of saying, is the problem what I think it is, or is the problem maybe me? Do I need to regroup? Do I need to rethink? Do I need to try a different way? I am not good at, who, who is good at self-criticism, right? And I don't mean like looking in the mirror and saying you're not good enough. That's not what I mean. I mean, actually critiquing yourself and saying, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm trying to do. Here's the outcome I'm trying to reach and I'm not getting there. How do I get there? Is it because of outside influences or is it me that's stopping me from getting to where I need to be? It's, it can sometimes be easier to say that it's someone else that's the problem. And sometimes indeed it is. And I know for some of you, you who are struggling with things like this, yeah, there are circumstances out there and there are people that you're dealing with who are just, you know, major pains in the butt and, and, you're not able to change them. The only thing you can change is how you respond to them. And it's a topic for a different day. But we all need to take time once in a while to sort of do the work of saying, okay, what isn't working? And, and what is my role in what's not working? It could be that you just have a little tiny bit. If you just tweak this or you make a different decision that things will get better, or you're at least able to deal with things get, that aren't going well that aren't your fault, that you can respond rather than react to what's not going well. But there are times in our lives, I know there's been plenty of times in my life, when I actually sit down and think, okay, what's the big problem? Is it me or is it something else? I'm going to use a really silly example. For instance, if you really, really, really can't have chocolate, like you really, you're trying to lose weight or you're diabetic or something, and there's chocolate in the house, is the fault the problem is it the, pro for the problem that, that there's chocolate in the house, that somebody else bought chocolate into your home? Or is the problem that you are having trouble resisting the chocolate that someone else brought into your home? Now, if you're the one who brought the chocolate in the home, there's a hell of a whole other conversation. But the idea is we have to look at ourselves and say, what is my role in this? Like that monk who is going to strap on his sandals and go to a new place, Emma Theodora reminded him, that where you go, you will take those temptations with you because that's something you have to change within yourself. There wasn't an actual other monk who was going ahead of him and preparing the way. That was a part of who he was. 
we all need to take that deep look inside ourselves and say, who am I? And which are the good parts that I need to hold on to? And which are the parts that I need to do some work on? So what kind of stuff can you work on today? And I'm not talking about things that you are on or that are not within your control. I'm not talking about things like your, you know, mental health or things that you need medication for or counseling and things like that. Because if you're getting all of those things and you're doing those things, you're already working toward becoming that person you want to be. But there's, for most of us, there's some little things in our lives, whether it's like gambling or, you know, smoking or, um, you know, procrastination, things like that. Those things that no matter where you go, you take them with you. What can you think of in your life today that you can say, I'm going to make a concentrated and intentional effort to change this behavior? I'm working on the procrastination piece right now. That's a big thing for me. So what about you? As you think about it, have a great day. God bless you. And I will see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.